I do a lot of my day to day work in the terminal and piping different commands together in the terminal is one of the most basic and yet powerful things you can do. You're probably already familiar with piping commands. For example, I can just cat this CSV file that I have here, or instead I could pipe it to WC for word count. If I really only care about the number of lines we could do dash L for number of lines. That's obviously a very simple pipe. We could do something more complex by saying, while we read each particular line, echo the individual line, and let's pipe it to word count dash C for characters. And we're gonna see how many characters there are per line. You've probably done this type of command line work before, where you can start maybe with the contents of a file or something like that and pipe it through a set of other commands. What you may not have realized is you can create your own commands that go between the pipes just as easily as you can use built-in ones or install others through Homebrew or other package managers. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. Let's say this is a pretty common thing that we do right here, where I care about over some content, maybe a file like this, what is the number of characters in every individual line? Let me go ahead and copy this while loop and we're gonna put it into our own command. So let's create a file that we could call line length.sh and paste that in. Because this is a shell script, it's a good idea to put a hash bang at the top. So I'm gonna say user bin env and we're gonna say use our local bash. Uh, you'll notice I'm getting some linting here. This is from shell check. I do have another video on shell check. We're gonna ignore those for now. But as you can see, the way this script starts is it starts with our while statement where we're reading individual lines from standard in. And the idea here is we're creating a script that can basically take content from standard in. The WC command is going to put content to standard out, just like it does when we use it on the terminal directly. And so we can see that this script now takes from standard in and prints to standard out in the same way that any other command might do. Let's go ahead and save this. Let's make this file executable so we can actually call it. And now if we cat this CSV file again and we pipe it to line length, you can see we get the same result. And so we can see the length of each individual line. And even better, we can actually continue to pipe the output of that to other commands. So for example, we could do a numerical sort on this and then maybe do a unique count and then another numerical sort. And now we can see that we have six lines that are 119, six lines that are 116, et cetera. And so we can see the number of times each line count appears in our output. And so we've created essentially a new command line command, you could say. We've created a script that we can use in a pipe just like anything else. In our example, this is kind of useful as almost like an alias of sorts. You're combining several commands that we could have just put on the command line here into a script. And this is great for reusable scripts. However, I find this even more powerful when you do this in another language. For example, I'm pretty comfortable in the terminal, but there's some stuff that I just find way easier to do in JavaScript. Here's another file I have here. Essentially, this is the format I get if I copy transactions off of my online banking portal right? And let's say I want to process those transactions in some way. The format of this is not super great for processing using command line tools, at least not ones that I'm currently familiar with. We've got weird white space stuff going on. We've got a date format that's not really easy to work with in command line tooling. We also have a transaction spread across three individual lines here instead of one transaction per line. So this type of content is much easier for me to process in JavaScript, but I would also love to be able to use other command line tools that I'm already familiar with to interact with it. So let's create a JavaScript file called TX. And to use this, we're gonna use part of the node standard library, which is the read line module. We could manage uh, standard in and standard out in node directly. We could use process.standardin and process.standardout, and we could listen for events on those. Read line is a nice wrapper around standard in that makes it easy for us to to process individual lines at a time. So the way we can do this is let's create a read line instance here. We can do read line dot create interface and we've got three pieces here. First, we need to know where is our input coming from process dot standard in. And then of course, we'll say the output is going to go to process dot standard out. Uh, the last thing we're going to do here is set terminal to false. If we don't set terminal at all, then anything we receive on standard in will also be printed to the terminal. And we don't want that. We just want to be able to control ourselves what the output is. And then we can listen for an event. So read line or RL dot on. We've got all of these different events we can take a look at. Really, the only one I care about is the individual line. We could reproduce our other shell script pretty easily. We could just do console dot log line dot length. Obviously, this script is a little bit more code, quite a bit more code, actually. Um, we could open up in a split here, 
our line length.sh file. And you can see this is, you know, three tight lines. We've got over a dozen lines over here in JavaScript. And so, you know, that's up to you to decide what language you are most comfortable writing in. We're going to look at how JavaScript can make some things easier in just a second. But let's actually run this and see that we get our line lengths as we expect. I'm going to go ahead and add a hash bang to this. Maybe you didn't know you could do this to a JavaScript file, but you can. We want to use the local node program to run this script. We can go ahead and make this executable. And now let's cat our transactions and we'll pipe it directly to tx.js. And as you can see, we get the length of our individual lines showing up. Excellent. If we wanted to just double check that we've got the right thing here, we can also print the lines, right? So the lines are there as well. Now that we actually have this content, we could do something with it. So maybe I want to create an array here called transaction lines. Let's do transaction lines dot push line dot trim. And then we can say if transaction lines dot length is equal to three TX lines and we can keep it simple at first. Let's just join him and let's set TX lines equal to an empty array. So we'll clear that. So notice what we're doing here. We're taking in every single line, but we're only printing out a new line every three lines. So we're going to take the three lines that make up one transaction and we're going to print them out as a single line. All right, let's give this a shot. And look at that already. This content is looking much better for processing with other command line tooling. It's pretty close to a CSV file. It's not perfect because of this date. In fact, maybe what we could do if line uh, dot includes and we'll keep this pretty simple for now. We can just say 2023 because that's when we're working on this and maybe line can equal a new date line. Let's see. To be honest, I'm not sure if this is going to work. I don't know if this is a format that we can print, but um, then we could do something like to uh, ISO string. That's the one I like. So let's see what happens now. Hey, look at that. That actually, yeah, that works. We got May 25th up here, May 25th, 22nd and 19th. Excellent. So there we go. We've successfully converted this date into something that is more processable with other tools. We've taken what is a file format that we really can't process very easily with other command line tools. And we've written a quick little bit of JavaScript to help us transform that. And of course, just to show that we can continue to pipe, we could do a sort here. And now you can see because the date is first, we've reversed the order of these. And we could even start printing these to awk. And we could say like uh, print column two or something like that. And we can just get all of the different stores that I shop at. This custom JavaScript fits right in between these pipes and can be used with other command line tools. So if you are trying to get more comfortable working on the command line and piping different commands together, but you don't really know exactly what commands are available to you, or you want to do something that you can't do in some of the standard commands that you have available, don't forget that the programming languages you're comfortable in almost definitely have a way to work with standard in and standard out. And that's all you need in order to create these types of scripts. I really enjoy working on the command line and I want to make more of these types of videos. So if this is something you are into as well, definitely leave a like, leave a comment letting me know what you guys like about the command line or what are some of your favorite tools to use. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.